thank you for this hour we thank you for this time lord we commit ourselves to you and we commit ourselves to your word we commit ourselves to the new beginning you are bringing our way lord i pray for every brother and every sister every newcomer here every boy every girl i pray the reality of a new beginning you bring into every life in jesus name Amen. the things in the past that tied us down the things in the past that weighed us now, the things in the past that limited us, I pray, Lord, you break every yoke in every life in Jesus' name. And you cut us off from the past, cut us off from the old life, so that in every life, even today, there'll be a new beginning in Jesus' name. Higher and higher, greater and greater, stronger and stronger make your people be in jesus name and confirm a new beginning in every life we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray you're not going to sit down till you give me a good good amen god bless you we're coming to second chronicles chapter 17 Second Chronicles chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 17, I'm looking at verse 1. And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. Look at that. It says, Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead. And then it says, he strengthened himself against Israel. As we look at that verse, I'm going to look at other verses, of course. I'm talking about a new beginning of reigning in life. A new beginning of reigning in life. When Jehoshaphat came to the throne, he knew, this is my chance. This is my singular chance. This is my opportunity. There is just one life to live. And when you leave this life, if you squander your resources, if you waste your time, if you waste your life, there's no other chance. Just one life. And Joshua decided, I'm going to reign in this single life. And now he tells us over here, it says, Joshua reigned in the stage instead of his father. And he strengthened himself. You look at every area of your life and whatever is weak there, whatever is a kind of a lazy, whatever is having laxity, you strengthen yourself. You buckle your belt. You say, I am ready to reign in life. And because I'm ready to reign in life, I make sure that I strengthen myself in every area. Your life will be strengthened. I said your life will be strong. I'm looking at uh, Romans chapter 15, and I'm looking at verse 4. Romans chapter 15, I'm reading to you from verse 4. Here it tells us in verse 4 of Romans chapter 15. It says in uh, chapter 15 verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, like the story we're reading today, like the account we're reading today about Jehoshaphat, whatsoever things were written aforetime, we're reaching for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope there's hope in your life i said there's hope in your life because as god brings the life of joshua before us today and in the glees he gives us lessons he gives us what to study he gives us the areas of plan so that the process of reigning will be effected and effective in your life that's the reason why we're looking at this he tells us in romans chapter 5 romans chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 17 romans chapter 5 verse 17 for if by one man's offense death range by one much more they that receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. It says, as we are introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, his salvation, 
and we're introduced to Jesus Christ, the inheritance that he gives us. It says, as sin came into the world by one man, Adam, and sin rage in every life, to ruin every life. It says now, Christ comes to us, and he gives us his very life, he gives us his righteousness, and we reign in life by the Lord Jesus Christ. When is what reigns in you? And when his promises reign in you? When his grace reigns in you? When his wisdom reigns in you? When the totality of the presentation of his life reigns in you? You are going to reign in life. Grace will reign in your life. Wisdom will reign in your life. Divine love will reign in your life. Heaven will reign in your life. And it says when you come into Christ like that, and Christ comes into you, and he takes the preeminence in your life, and he takes the dominion in your life, and everything about you is Jesus. Everything about you is Christ. Everything about you is the very Son of God. It says because of that, he reigns in you, and you reign in life. Look at verse 21. It says that as sin has reigned unto death in the past, before we knew Christ, sin reigned unto death. Evil reigned unto death, and Satan reigned unto death in the past. But now he's telling us that as Christ comes into our lives and we're saved, we're born again, we become the children of God, and we quit the same business and say, Sin, bye bye, you have reigned enough. I'm going to have a new beginning. I'm talking for myself, I am going to have a new beginning. And then sin is gone. Satan is gone. Self is overcome. It says, now look at what will follow. Even so, might, even so, my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You make him the Lord of your life. He reigns in your life. He reigns in your heart. He reigns in your behavior. You come into this experience that you are lifted up to sit in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ and something new begins in your life. It will begin today. I said it will begin today because Jesus, by His grace, Jesus, in His love, Jesus, by his promise, Jesus, by his intercession for you right now, in the presence of the Heavenly Father, will so reign and make you reign in life in Jesus' name. We're coming back to Second Chronicles chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 1. And Joshaphat his son reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. As we look at the life of Joshua today, I'm talking to you on a new beginning of reigning in life. A new beginning of reigning in life. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the price of the promised reign. He promised us we're going to reign, but there's a price to pay. He promised us we're going to have dominion, but it's a price to pay. He promised us we're going to be the head and not the tail, but it's a price to pay. He promised us that we will reign in life, but it's a price to pay. Point number one, the price of the promised reign. Number two, the prevention of painful reversal. The prevention of painful reversal. You know what that means? There are people, the Lord has a great thing for them, a great prospect for them, a great promise for them, a great promotion for them, a great provision of progress for them. But they reverse that. They reverse that in their lives. The Lord is saying, come up higher get up higher, go up higher, and then they reverse that. There's a reversal in their lives. And as you look at the life of uh, Jehoshaphat, you'll find the reversal of what the Lord had promised. The Lord was looking at him, and he was uh, seeing him making progress, strengthening himself, 
and teaching everyone in Judah and making them to go the right way all of a sudden we find a reversal in his life your progress will not be reversed your opportunities will not be reversed and your dominion will not be reversed in Jesus name we can prevent that reversal the prevention of painful reversal point number three now the possibility of permanent recovery thank God Jehoshaphat recovered himself today is your day I said today is your day you will recover yourself if you've gone into the wilderness with Ahab with unbelievers if you've gone to a battlefield and you left your own assignment you have left your own dominion and you have left your own calling and then you've joined unbelievers in running their own race and you have joined an ungodly man an ungodly woman in running their own race you are coming back from that today there'll be a recovery in your life and then the battle that came he overcame and today you become an overcomer and when you look at the end of the story he recovered quite a lot looks like from today i'm going to recover everything i have lost i said i'm going to recover everything i have lost you will recover in jesus name if you are sick you are going to recover you have lost property you are going to recover you have lost territory you are going to recover you have lost your family you are going to recover anything everything you have lost there's going to be a full recovery in your life in jesus name number three the possibility of permanent a permanent recovery let's come to point number one we're talking about number one the price of promise of the promised rain we're coming back again to second chronicles chapter 17 verse 5 and joseph had his son range in his stage and strengthened himself against israel i'm asking you a question now how are you strengthening yourself against every attack every opposition every challenge every problem everything that comes against your life wanting to stop your progress how are you strengthening yourself are you just living from day to day without understanding there is an enemy there is an adversary there is an opposer and there are agents of satan that will not want you to get your goal strengthen yourself look at verse 2 and he placed forces in all the fence cities of judah he set a fence around him around the cities of judah what's fence that's a barrier so that the enemy will not come in he said a barrier how are you making a fence in your life a fence of the wall of fire that all those reptiles that are coming from outside when they get to the fence around your family they will not touch your family they will not touch your life a fence and then he put forces there and said garrisons in the land of judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which is uh, his father had taken, and the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. What are you doing? That you will not miss the presence of the Lord in your life. You see, Jehoshaphat he so lived his life, and he so fenced himself, he so protected himself that the Lord was with him. The Lord will be with you. But remember, two cannot work together except they be agreed. You must be in agreement with the Lord every time, every step you take, every word you speak, every place you go, every act you demonstrate so that the Lord will be with you because he watch in the first ways of his father David. He walked in the way of the Lord 
as David had worked. He saw other bad examples. He saw other bad eggs in the kingdoms of Israel. He looked at the history of the children of Israel. He saw the people that lived their lives in disobedience and in sin and in pollution and in defilement. He said, no. When he said no to those things, he said yes to the Lord, and he walked in the way of the Lord as David had done. And he sought not unto barely. On the positive side, he walked with God. On the negative side, he said, that's wrong, I'll not go that way. That's wrong, I'll not touch that. That's wrong, I'll not go there. That's wrong, I will not walk in that way. And then we're told, and he sought the Lord God of his father, seeking the Lord by prayer, seeking the Lord by fasting, seeking the Lord by devotion, seeking the Lord by worship, seeking the Lord by abandoning every other sin that called his attention. He sought the Lord God of his fathers and he walked in his commandments. He was careful. He was watchful. He walked in the commandments of the Lord. There are various voices calling him, come this way, come this way, come that way. But he said, no, here is the way that the Lord has marked before me. And he sought the Lord. He walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore, 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 the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. This is your year. This year, the Lord will establish your kingdom will establish your dominion but you want to make sure it says therefore because he sought the lord because he walked with the lord and because he'll not go the evil way that's the reason why the lord established his kingdom and then you were told that all judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents presents will come to you gifts will come to you Help will come to you. Help us will come to you. And then it says, and he had riches and honor in abundance. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 also, in the third year of his reign, he said to the princes, even to ben -Hil and to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nathaniel, and unto Michael, to teach in the cities of Judah, to teach in the cities of Judah, to teach in the cities of Judah. Look up here for a moment. If I, as a pastor, if I, as a leader, if I want to have a new beginning, a greater beginning, a higher beginning, what's one of the things I ought to do? I ought to look at all the cities in our state, all the cities in our country, and everywhere, and train teachers of the Word of God, and send them there and say, you stay here, you stay here, you stay there, you stay there. If I only teach the general public, if I only teach everybody as you come every Sunday, every Monday, and all the meeting days, and I don't appoint teachers of the word of God who will earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints and put them in every city and put them in every country the reign that God intended for me will not be realized I'm telling you something uh, as a group pastor I'm telling you something as a state overseer as a region overseer if you don't look at all the cities your territory and have qualified capable faithful available committed teachers of the word of god you will not train as god has intended but thank god you are going to reign am i talking to anybody this morning i said thank god you are going to reign look at verse 11 and they taught in judah look at that they taught in judah they were faithful you'll be faithful in your district you'll be faithful in your group you'll be faithful anywhere the lord has used your pastor to send you and you're there and you are to teach the word of god from a to z from the beginning to the end and you are to teach faithfully so that people will be born again and so that people will have a change of life and a change of mind and a change of direction you'll be faithful in jesus name and he taught in judah 
and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. They had the book with them. They had the book with them. Do you have the book with you? Where is your Bible? I said, where is your Bible? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Thank God and go with that Bible. Everywhere you go, you will conquer in Jesus' name. Did you know there are people that come to church and you know they don't have the book with them? They are ashamed of the book. They are ashamed to be identified with the Holy Bible. And maybe they are not living right and people will say, and you also, so you carry the Bible. And you also, so you have the book. Everywhere you go, go with that book. Everything you do, do it according to that book. And it is as you are faithful to the Lord in the record of the word of God. He has in the book that you are going to reign in life in Jesus' name. And uh, you cannot say you are a pastor uh, it's because I was coming from the office. He didn't come with the Bible to the church. And he, he wants to preach and he goes to borrow Bible from somebody. You can tell it's not prepared. You can tell it's not ready. What are you going to give to the people? What are you going to deliver to the people? When you didn't even study the Bible at home and you didn't prepare the message, you just came to church, uh, lent me your Bible there and share with your partner. I didn't bring my Bible. You are not a preacher. You preach of the word of God. Jehoshaphat saying to people everywhere and it's says they had the book of the law of the Lord with them and they went about throughout all the cities they went about throughout all the cities everywhere you go in every house where you have come from the Bible will be the standard there the word of God will be the standard there. Salvation will be the center of that home where you have come from, where you have come in Jesus' name. They went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. They need to entertain the people. They taught the people. They didn't just uh, make the people happy. They taught the people. They didn't just excite the people. They taught the people. And they taught them about repentance. They taught them about salvation. They taught them about living according to the word of God. And because that was uh, prevalent all over in the land of uh, Judah at that time, look at the result in verse 10. Uh, and the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Battles are ended in your life. Wars are ended in your life. Conflicts are ended in your life in Jesus' name. When you pay the price, when you say this is what you do and I must do it faithfully, the Lord will make you reign in Jesus' name. Verse 12, verse 12, and Jehoshaphat works great exceedingly. And Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat is gone, but I'm looking at somebody before me right there. Who is the person that is going to work great? The Lord confirm it in your life. I said, the Lord confirm it in your life. And Jehoshaphat works great exceedingly. And he built in Judah castles and cities of storm. I want you to look at 1 Samuel chapter 2 and see the provision of God and see the plan of God and see what it does. But there's a price to pay. And once you are ready and you say, I'm going to cut off from the past. That life of mediocrity is going to come to an end. That life of weakness is going to come to an end. That life of uh, having, uh, you know, everything walking over you and running over you and everything having dominion over you, that life of slavery is going to end your life. From this day, it will end in your life. Then you will come up. I said you will come up. I said you will come up. And when you come up after this a message of the day and after prayer, as you go out there, enemies will clear before you. The roads will clear before you. 
First Samuel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 8. In First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, look at this. He raises up the poor out of the dust. Not that he raised in the past, he's still doing it today, and he's going to affirm it today in your life. He raises up the poor out of the dust, he lifts up the beggar from the dunk hill to search them among princes. I told you, this is your time. They'll set you among those who are going to reign as princes in Jesus' name to make them inherit the throne of glory. Shame is gone. Defeat is gone. You will inherit the throne of glory in Jesus' name. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and He has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of His saints. You didn't hear that one. He will keep the feet of his saints. The wicked shall be silent in that place. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king he'll give you strength and exalt the horn of his anointed he will promote you psalm 119 psalm 119 i'm reading from verse 133 133 psalm 119 i'm reading from psalm 133 it says order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me. Iniquity will not have dominion over you. Sin will not have dominion over you. Evil will not have dominion over you. But understand, understand, you must take your ground, you must take your stand, and you must tell that evil and tell that iniquity there is no chance for you here. It's a new beginning for me, and I will reign. And I must reign, and all those things I'm going to trample upon them in Jesus' name. Psalm 18, 1 8. Psalm 18, I'm reading from verse 35. Psalm 18, verse 35. Thou also hast given me the shield of thy salvation. You must be saved, have salvation. Have a forgiveness of sin and understand that the Lord grants you the shield and the protection of his salvation. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy right hand has holding me up and thy gentleness has made me great. Can you say that? Thy gentleness has made me great. I want to hear you. Use the preacher's voice. You know, some people, they think it's by being violent, they're going to be great. Uh -uh. That doesn't make anybody great. They think it is by being a bully, they're going to become great. No, that doesn't make anybody great. It brings you down. But the gentleness of the Lord, the meekness of the Lord, the mildness, the mind of Christ that we have, that is what makes us great. It says, thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, and my feet did not sleep. You will not sleep. You will not fall. Look at verse 43. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me, hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. That is reigning. You are going to reign in Jesus' name. Look at verse 48 there. He delivers me from my enemies. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. And thou hast delivered me from the violent man. That violent man in your community, God will deliver you. They want to stop the progress of God in your life. They will not. 
they want to cancel the project of God in your life, they cannot. And they want to stop you before you get to the top of your career, they will not stop you. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man, therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name, songs of joy in your mouth. I said songs of joy in your mouth. The prize of the promise ring, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we're reading from verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 28, reading from verse 13. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13, here is the promise the Lord has given. But there's a price to pay, always look at the price so that you will not miss out of the fulfillment of the promise of the Lord. It tells us in verse 13, the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hacking. That's the price, that's the price, that's the preparation. That's the thing to do. You cannot just fold your hand. He'll make me the head. You cannot just sleep all through the day. He'll make me the head. And you cannot just, just go without doing anything. And do nothing. You achieve nothing. But it says, if you will hearken to the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I commanded this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I commanded this day, to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them and the Lord will fulfill his promise in your life we're coming to the New Testament now and we're coming to Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 17 Luke chapter behold I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions, you are reigning over them. And over all the power of the enemy, you are reigning over the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. I will spend all my days on earth. I will spend all my days on earth. Nothing will kill you before your time. Nothing will poison you before your time. Nothing will hurt you before your time. And it says in verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Make sure you have your name in the book of life in heaven. And then you are going to reign. Romans chapter 6, in Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 12, Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 12, it says in verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, it's, look at this, it's talking about sin like an entity, and then it talks about you, it's saying to God, when there are two entities, A and B, and one is on top of the other. It's either A is on top of B, or B is on top of A. You cannot be under sin and have dominion at the same time. It's either sin is over you, suppressing you, stopping you, overcoming you, having dominion over you, or you change position, you come to the top. I said, you come to the top, and sin will be under your feet, and sin will not reign over you. Even the small sin will not reign over you, and the big sin will not reign over you. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey each and the laws thereof. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Say good amen. Sin shall not have dominion over me. When you are alone all by yourself, sin shall not have dominion over you. 
when you're in the office in the market in your community sin will not have dominion over you when you go to the village you go to visit your people and you're all alone there sin will not have dominion over you i was waiting for an amen over there i'm reading now from romans chapter 16 verse 19 Romans chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 19, the price of the promised rain. It says in verse 19, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Your obedience to the word of God, everybody knows wherever you are. In your community, that's a Bible, a deeper life Bible man, a deeper life Bible woman. She lives by the Bible. Your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. Look up here, look up here. I'm glad on your behalf. I said I'm glad on your behalf. Victory in your life. Righteousness in your life. Dominion in your life. It says, I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace, and the God of peace, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Is he there? Are you there? I said, are you there? The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Uh, that's how to have dominion. That's how to have the power. That's how to reign. And you reign in life. You are going to reign. First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2. We're reading here from verse 9. It tells us about your position, tells us about your power, tells us about your priesthood. It says in verse 9, but here a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth that's the price we pay. It's choosing you to be a priest, royal priesthood. He's choosing you to be an overcomer. And he says, you're a holy nation. And now it says that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Yeah. We'll come back to Second Chronicles. I'm reading from chapter 18, the prevention of painful reversal. So far, so good. As we look at the life of Jehoshaphat, he reigned, he was strong, he became rich, and the Lord prospered him, and thousands and thousands of people came, and they were at his service, obedient unto him. But now, point number two, the prevention of painful reversal. The reversal of something good, of the rain, that you need to put in place in your life. And it means you are going to make up your mind and make a decision and say, this will not happen. I'll show you why. In Second Chronicles chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 1. Now, Jehoshaphat riches and honor in abundance and a joint affinity with Ahab. That word, affinity, affiliation association alliance he joined himself unto ahab and then it says after certain years he went down to ahab he went to visit him to samaria and ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him that means that Joshua did not go alone. He went with other people, other believers, others of his subjects, others of his followers, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramos Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Joshua, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me? 
Will thou walk with me? Will thou walk with me? Will thou battle with me? Will thou go with me unto Remus Gilead? And he answered and said, I am as thou art. When you have the closeness to unbelievers, you forget yourself. You say what you shouldn't say. You, tell, you begin to tell lies unconsciously, unknowingly. I am as thou art. Jehoshaphat, that's not true. I must thou add, you are king of Judah, he is king of Israel. I must thou add, that's not true. I'm just like you, that's not true. We are together, that's not true. I, my destiny is like your destiny, that's not true. My people are like your people, that's not true. When you mix with unbelievers, and when you go with those unbelievers, the righteous people, you begin to tell lies, you forget your identity. You forget who you are, and you begin to say, I must thou add, and my people as thy people. Jehoshaphat, if you are talking for yourself, don't talk for me. Don't talk for the rest of us. Don't talk for the people. He said, my people as thy people, we will be with thee in the war. You know the problem for a leader? The leader's decision is a decision for everybody. It's not just that I, as Jehoshaphat, will go with you. I and all my people were going to go with you. Jehoshaphat, how could you say that? You have not even checked off from the Lord. Should I do this? Should I not do this? When you have affiliation with unbelievers, first of all, in friendship, you go to visit one another. He eats in your house, you eat in his house. He knows everything about your family, and you know things about his family. You know about his challenges, he knows about your challenges. He'll be making some suggestions. Will you go with me? Will you do this? And will you do that? And without praying at all, without remembering everything you have learned in the Bible, in the Word of God, be not unequally yoked together with some believers without remembering anything. You, know? you just go ahead and say, yes, I'm here. I'm going to go with you. You know the interpretation of that? He loved the person that hated the Lord. Look at chapter 19. Chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 2. Chapter 19, verse 2, and Jehu, the son of Ananai, is uh, the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Is a child of the devil? Is doing the will of the devil? Is obeying the words of the devil? Is influenced by evil spirit? And is uh, going to the, the work of the devil? Should you help somebody working for the devil to make the work of the devil prosper? Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Yes, ungodly principle ungodly practice ungodly life should you help the ungodly he has a project it's an ungodly project and when he gets the money he's going to use it to serve idol he's going to put it on serving bail should you help him to succeed should thou help the ungodly then to religion evil religion then to religion is a kind of a religion that, will, that is uh, making people to be lost. Should you help a Pharisee? Should you help a Sadducee? Should you help uh, somebody who is leading people to hell? Should us now help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore, is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. It's like he reversed the blessings of God upon his life. You will not reverse the blessing of God upon your life. Did I hear an amen? Yeah. When you join with an unbeliever in business, you are helping him to make money and he's going to spend it for the devil. When you join an idol worshiper in anything at all, you are raising uh, the prospect and the project of the unbeliever. When you join them in marriage, you're going to produce children, and you're producing children for the kingdoms of this world. You're producing them for hell. You're producing them for perdition. 
because that unbeliever is a will want to raise the child in their evil way in their satanic way in their idolatrous way and here you are and it says okay if you want to go to church go to your church but don't take my child don't take my children he counts them as his children and if it's a woman she counts them as her children and you have joined together in that unholy wedlock in that unholy marriage if it is business partnership you are helping the ungodly i have capital you have capital let's join our hands together join our resources together and then go and register with cac or whatever and you are ready wherever you are registering and you register you put your name along with the name of the unbeliever and the lord is saying should you have done that and should you have gone to help the ungodly and the unholy and the righteous and love them that hate the lord therefore is wrath upon thee from before the lord let's come back to chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 6 chapter 18 verse 6 and joshua said is there not here a prophet of the lord besides that we might inquire of him he was asking Jehoshaphat, or is it you want to investigate after you have made the covenant you're investigating after you have made the promise you are now you now want to find out after you have said yes i'm going with you and my people will go with you my people are like your people there's some people they talk before they think they act before they sing they're in a hurry to please Ahab they're in a hurry to please the unbeliever and they already give their hand in marriage they already give their word they go to school and in school they meet an unbeliever they meet a member of a gang a culty gang and that one is showing you know some signs of friendship and they're going along they're not even investigating already they have made their commitment before they now begin to investigate somebody is a dubious character and who is uh, you know a rogue a robber a thief and there uh, is a knight a marauder and then you want to make alliance with him you have decided before you make investigation they jump before they look and they jump into perdition and they jump into the beach you will not do that i will not do that you know there are people they're so friendly and they want to show i'm friendly i'm nice i'm social sociable and therefore they make a commitment after after that they begin to find out now is this right should we go to this battlefield should we go and fight your shepherd you're taking the wrong step look at verse 6 and Jehoshaphat said is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord but tell me there's one man I hate him and you want to join our hands with the people that hate the Lord. Do you have any of your relatives uh, coming to a uh, deeper life? Oh, there, there, there's one man, but I hate him. There's one lady, if she goes to deeper life, we have the same family, but I hate her. And you want to join hands with such a person that hates a righteous believer it says but i hate him it says because he never prophesied good unto me it's just always talking about repent if you don't repent you will perish it's always reminding me the axe is laid unto the root of the tree and the tree that does not bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire it says that's evil he always says about me the same is Micaiah the son of Imla and Jehoshaphat said let not the king say so Jehoshaphat does not know that's the point you should have said if that is so I'm sorry I repent of my decision I repent of my association I repent of my affinity I repent of my affiliation you hate the man of God you hate the preacher of the truth 
you you hate a truth teller i'm sorry i repent about the covenant i come out of that and it says and the king of israel called for one of the officers and said fetch quickly micaiah the son of imla but you know this man already said i hate him all the same go and call him go and call him look at proverbs chapter 8 verse 36 proverbs chapter 8 verse 36 but he that sinners against me wrongest his own soul all that hate me love this you should realize that once the man said ahab said i hate him he tells the truth i hate him it shows the way of righteousness but i hate him it shows the way of repentance of righteousness but i hate him it shows how to love the lord with all your heart all your soul all your mind but i hate him that's the time you ought to understand this man that hates the truth teller loves death and if he's a candidate for death Jehoshaphat, you don't want to go along with him let's come back to second chronicles chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 16 second chronicles chapter 18 verse 16 and he said this is micaiah now i see all israel scattered upon the mountains a sheep that has no shepherd that means ahab was going to die and micaiah said so and even though micaiah revealed the truth Joshaphat was see so much embedded entrenched associated with this Ahab that you'll not go back the Lord said these have no master let them return therefore every man to his house in peace and then he goes on in verse 17 and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat did not I tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil and again he said therefore hear the word of the lord i saw the lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left and the lord said who shall persuade who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Tremos Gilead, and won't speak, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? How will you entice him? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. A lying spirit came into the prophets of ahab and deceived him when you join affinity when you join in affiliation when you join in association with the people of the world don't you know it's the spirit of the devil that abides in them the spirit of evil that is guiding them and as you join with them you are joining with the spirits of evil I pray God will deliver you. Amen. 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 Yeah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Even him who's walking is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of righteousness in them that perish because 
they received not the love of the truth. Ahab did not have the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Ahab was under delusion. He believed the evil spirits speaking from those prophets that so that they will perish. And it says that they should believe a lie. And when Jehoshaphat joined him, he believed a lie eventually. I know what Ahab did. Ahab said, you keep your robe as the robe of the king. I will disguise myself. And Jehoshaphat felt image good. But Jehoshaphat was planning that if what Micaiah is saying, they're going to look for the king and they're going to kill the king, they will kill him and I will remain alive. The people of the world that are joining with, they're doing that for their own interest. If they're politicians, it's for their own interest. If they're traders and merchants, it's for their own interest. If they're businessmen, it's for their own interest. If they're traveling from here to there and they want you to go along with them, it's for their own interest. If they're going to do something apparently good in a particular place, it's for their own interest. And they say you should join them. I pray that an evil spirit will not deceive you. Satan will not deceive you. It says, because they will not believe the truth. God sent them, God allowed them to have the spirit of the devil that deceived them. Look at verse 12, that they all might be damned. That they all might be damned. Ahab was heading for damnation. And when Jehoshaphat joined him, he too was him, was heading for damnation, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I pray the Lord will deliver us from such association and from such uh, affinity in Jesus' name. I will not join them. I said I will not join them. And deeper life as a church will not join them. Yeah. I didn't hear my people. Yeah. They want to use the name of deeper life so that they can fulfill uh, the prophecy of the line of the lying spirits. But deeper life will not believe a lie. Yeah. And every member of deeper life, you will not believe a lie. If you have associated with the ungodly today, you break that association, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will set you free. The Lord will not allow the Lord of the righteous to fall upon your head in Jesus' name. Jehoshaphat, I'm talking about you now. Jehoshaphat, I said I'm talking about you, answer me. Jehoshaphat, you will not die the death of Ahab. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The unbelievers, they may call themselves by any name. They may call themselves by fellowship. They may call themselves by the name denomination. They might call themselves by the name church. There are so many kinds of churches. And there are churches that there's no salvation being preached. There are churches there's no righteousness being preached. There are churches and they say, let's all come together. Because Jesus prayed for us that they all might be one. Those who are serving the devil. Those who are Pharisees. Those who are Sadducees. Those who are into false doctrine. Those who are workers of iniquity. All those people. Let us all come together that they all might be one. That's not the prayer of Jesus. He prayed that we might be sanctified and he says those who are not of the world as I'm not of the world sanctify them through the truth as they are sanctified that sanctified believers might be one we're not going to be one with the righteous I said we're not going to be one with the ungodly we're going to be one only with those who are saved and sanctified in Jesus name I can't hear a good good amen we will not join backsliders. 
will not join Pharisees, will not join false prophets, will not join those who are using whatever magic and whatever occultic power to do whatever and then to help them, help them. They say, send your good choir to us to come and help us. Uh -uh. Our choir will not help those who are preaching evil those who are preaching error and those who are leading people to hell a choir will not go there to be a blessing to something evil in jesus name they say send your prayer warriors to us they need to come and pray with us so that this project will have and uh -uh, don't even complete it our prayer warriors will not go there send your pastors to us so that they'll come and help us no we're not going to help those who are preaching false doctrine be not on equally yoked together with some believers for what fellowship has righteousness with a righteousness what communion has a light of darkness what concord has christ with belial and what part has he that believeth with an infidel what agreement what agreement what agreement has the temple of god with idols for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 17, we're going to read this out aloud. One, two, three, go. You will obey the word of God. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from among them. If you have gone in already, like Jehoshaphat, come out. If you have gone in already and you have mistakenly opened your mouth, I am as thou art. And my people, as thou art, the Lord is saying, repent of that wrong decision and repent of that wrong affiliation it says wherefore come out from among them and be separate says the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty any amen over there Psalm 139. Psalm 139. I'm reading from verse 21. Psalm 139. I'm reading from verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? The profound false doctrine, you hate that. I hate it too. And they're serving the devil, and you hate that, and I hate that too. They are the doctrines of Nicolaitan. You hate that, and I hate that too. And they follow after the devil, and they serve the devil, and they spend their strength for the devil. You hate that, and I hate that too. They worship Baal. You hate that, and I hate that too. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? I'm not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. What are my thoughts? You're a parent. You want to give your child out in marriage and uh, the family coming it's an unbelieving family and the child their child they want to present to your son to marry is a worldly sinful girl sinful lady what are your thoughts what are you thinking about uh -huh. he lives overseas he lives in america he lives in europe he lives in canada he lives in wherever and then he'll be able to work it out for your child so that he'll take your child overseas so that a child will be totally separated from you and separated from sound doctrine it says search me what's my motive search me what's my heart what are my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting you will not lose everlasting life i said you will not lose everlasting life you continue with the lord in jesus name but thank god Jehoshaphat eventually recovered himself you recover yourself 
I say you recover yourself your local church and your family if your family has joined along with those uh, uh, they want to have the liberty to preach what is evil they want to go away from holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and they're raising up a fellowship and assembly a ministry and a saying come and join uh, and they put uh, their meetings on days that are free they say this will not uh, disturb at all your deeper life uh, Sunday at time is different it will not disturb your Monday Bible study at time is different come and and join us and you're already putting your leg there you're already investigating maybe i should go and help him today you will come out and every everything you have lost you will regain in jesus name you are going to reign in life not through that bell you are going to reign in life not with ahab but you are going to reign in life the lord will give us total recovery in jesus name Point number three now, the possibility of permanent recovery. You know what? Uh, Joshua remembered how he started. You remember how you started. When you came to the Lord, and when you believe now the lord jesus christ and you are saved or maybe you're a pastor you're a preacher maybe you're a leader like me and you remember where you started i also remember where i started i remember my calling you will remember what did you remember look at chapter 17 chapter 17 before you went into that alliance before you went into that affiliation before you went into that affinity look at what you remembered i'm looking at chapter 17 verse 7 also in the third year of his reign he sent to his princes even to Ben Hill and to Obadiah and to Zechariah and to Nathaniel and to Micaiah to teach in the cities of Judah. To teach in the cities of Judah. That's what he was doing. He was encouraging those who know the word. He was bringing up those who knew the word. He was a kind of a giving assignment to those who knew the word to go to all the cities and teach. You remember that? Look at verse 9. And he taught, and he taught, and he taught in Judah. And in the book of the law of the Lord with them and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people that's the way he started now he remembered how do we say remembered come to chapter 19 chapter 19 we're looking at verse 4 now chapter 19 verse 4 and Joshua dwelt at Jerusalem and he went out again this is what he did before he did it again and he went out again through the people from Beersheba unto Mount Ephraim and he brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers he brought them back he was an agent of backsliding he was instrumental to their backsliding. He said, I am as thou art, and my people are as thy people. And he led them to join Ahab, the worshiper of Baal. And now he himself, he went to places where he had destroyed their faith. He had destroyed their confidence. If you have been instrumental to somebody backsliding, when we talk about backsliding, we're not just talking about uh, somebody fell into adultery, somebody fell into fornication. That's not it. We're talking about those who make people to go away from the path of righteousness. And those who make people to forget about the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And you lead people into careless living, frivolous living. And they live a lie. Now that you realize you'll do what Joseph has done so you can be recovered and so they can be covered he himself went out and he went to all the people and he brought them back unto the lord god of their fathers look at verse 5 and he said judges in the land throw out all the famous cities of judah city by city it established teachers again uh, that will teach them about repentance about restitution about righteousness and said unto the judges take heed what do you do for ye judge not for man 
but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. And he said this also that they can teach the people again and so that they can make them return unto the Lord. If you are going to recover yourself and recover the people you have led astray, you must go to them and you must tell them this is the way. What he therein is Psalm 51. Psalm 51, I'm reading here from verse 11. Psalm 51, verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. That's the prayer a person like Joshua should pray. That's the prayer David prayed. That's the prayer a backslider will pray. And after that restoration, and after God had spared the life of Joshua, he did something. He went now to the people and bring them back unto the Lord. Look at verse 13. Then, after you grant me the joy of salvation, the joy of restoration, and the joy of being what you are calling upon you, and you give me the joy of answered prayer, then when I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. That was the aim, that was the goal of Joshua. That is our goal. That is your goal. All the people that have gone astray, God will help you. You'll bring them back in Jesus' name. Go to visit them. You're not visiting to join them in their error, to join them in their evil, but to bring them back unto the Lord. They will come back. I said they will come back. And then after this now, trouble came. But thank God, thank God. This trouble did not come when Joseph, when Joseph was still far away from the Lord. He had come to the Lord now and he believes on the Lord now and he has gone to all of Judah, all those uh, cities and he brought the people back unto the Lord and now trouble came. Any trouble that comes to you after you have made your reconciliation with the Lord, thank God you are going to overcome. I say thank God you are going to overcome. Chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass after this, after this, after this also, that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and was them all that beside the Ammonites, they came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Thank God it wasn't in chapter 9, chapter 18 that they came against him. Thank God it wasn't last year they came against you like this. Any kind of an enemy that will come together against you this year of a new beginning, you will overcome them in Jesus' name. And then uh, there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, uh, There comes a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Azazontema, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. He knew that this one will battle it out, and God will give us the victory. I said, God will give us the victory. And Judah gathered themselves together. Thank God Judah was restored already. And Judah was brought back to the Lord already. And Judah had repented already. And Judah had restoration to salvation already. And they came together now to ask help of the Lord. Even of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Joshua stood in the congregation of Judah and uh, of Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court. And Joshua said, O Lord God of our fathers, now he could pray confidently because sin had been dealt with. He could pray confidently because he was no more a backslider. I doubt not our God. Yes, it's our God now. And thou God in heaven. And he says, thou rulest not, does not now rule over all the kingdoms of the heathen. And in thine hand 
there is a power and might so that none is able to withstand thee. Amen. Amen. Verse 12, O oh, oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? It will judge your enemies. For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee my eyes are upon the lord my eyes are upon the lord he will deliver you you will not fail you'll not be conquered you'll not be destroyed psalm 70 psalm 66 i'm reading from verse 17 psalm 66 reading from verse 17 i cried unto him with my mouth and he was extolled with my tongue if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me if i remain with ahab the lord will not hear me if i'm thinking of something dreaming of something in my heart i want to gain from ahab and i remain with ahab the lord will not hear me if i remain in that backsliding position the lord will not hear me but joshua did not remain there he came out you will come out and he went through out all the cities of judah and he taught the people the people you have led astray you'll bring them back to the lord and then he said teachers of the word of god to teach in all the cities you'll do that if that is your position in verse 19 but verily god has heard me he has attended to the voice of my prayer blessed be god which has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me his mercy will not depart from you after this come back come back now to second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 second chronicles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 20 and he rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tequa and as they went forth joseph stood and said hear me O judah he could talk now with confidence and with faith he could talk with assurance hear me O judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. This new year, you'll be established. It'll establish your life, establish your Christian experience, establish the promises of God in your life, establish your family, establish that project in Jesus' name believe his prophets so believe his prophets so believe his prophets so so shall ye prosper you will prosper mark chapter 11 verse 22 mark 11 verse 22 it says, Jesus answered, saith unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. This year, have faith in God. Every day, have faith in God. Whatever the challenge, have faith in God. Sickness knocks at the door, have faith in God. It will not overcome you, you will overcome that sin. Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says i will have whatsoever i say therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them and i will have them and i will have them 
second chronicles chapter 20 verse 22 second chronicles chapter 20 verse 22 when they began to sing and to praise the lord the lord set ambushments against the children of ammon moab mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten and they shall be smitten sing when you have all those problems all doubts will flee away the battles will end and sing don't be sorrowful sing don't be sad sing don't be doubtful your enemies will be defeated in jesus name and the children of ammon and of moab stood up against the inhabitants of matsia they will leave you alone they'll begin to fight against themselves utterly to slay and to destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of seir everyone helped to destroy another they destroyed themselves i said they destroyed themselves the weapons they wanted to use against you to kill you to destroy you to terminate your life they'll use their weapons upon themselves verse 24 and judah came toward the watch toward uh, in the in, uh, toward the watchtower in the wilderness and they looked unto the multitude and behold they were dead bodies falling onto the earth and none escaped none escaped and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them they found among them in abundance abundance coming to you both riches or the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away more than they could carry away prosperity this year more than you can carry away riches this year more than you can carry away success this year more than you can carry away joy happiness this year more than you can carry away and there were three days three days three days in gathering of the spoil because it was so much it was so much it was so much your blessings this year this year so much loads of blessing so much happiness so much joy so much victory so much isaiah chapter 35 verse 1 isaiah chapter 35 verse 1 the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them the desert shall rejoice your desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing if you didn't know how to sing before this year you will sing the glory of lebanon shall be given unto each the excellency of camel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god strengthen ye the weak hands confirm the feeble knees say to them that are fearful of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your god will come with vengeance even god with a recompense he will come and save you he will come and deliver you he will come and prosper you the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an hatch, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. 
for in the wilderness shall the waters shall waters break out and streams in the desert the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes and a highway shall be there a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it it shall be for those the wayfaring men though fools shall not hear therein no lion shall be there no lion shall meet you on the way no lion shall catch up with you on the way nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon it shall not be found there but the redeemed of the lord shall walk there and the ransomed of the lord shall return are they here today the ransomed of the lord shall return I told you the other time that you are going to give testimony in the Thursday revival hour. If you have not given your testimony, go back this Thursday testimony in your mouth. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and shall come to Zion with, with sorrow, with sadness, with tears, with regrets. Tell me. Tell me. Let the whole church become a whole choir. Tell me. With songs and everlasting joy upon your heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sigh shall flee away. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Sorrow and sigh shall flee away. Why don't you stand up? Why don't you stand up and receive that blessing upon your life? Sorrow and sign shall flee away. From your family, sorrow and sign shall flee away. From your business, sorrow and sign shall flee away. From your academic work, sorrow and sign shall flee away. From your personal life, sorrow and sign shall flee away. A new beginning, a new beginning, a new beginning. Raise up your voice to the Lord and claim it. It is for you. It is for you. You are going to reign. You are going to reign. A new beginning of reigning in life. A new beginning of reigning in life. You'll pay the price. You'll pay the price. You will prevent anything that will ruin you. Anything that will bring a reversal. There are going to be possibilities in your life. Possibilities in your life of total, permanent, perfect recovery. Recovery. It's your time. Make sure that you are blessed. Make sure you are saved. Make sure you are sanctified. Make sure you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Make sure you believe the promises of God and the Lord will establish you and prosper you with this new beginning in the new year.